how many sports fans in the house? I see about like 20% of you. Do we have any esports fans in the house? Yeah, that's more like it. A major part of creating a nation, a major part of creating a nation is to create a sense of nationalism. We all want to feel a part of the same nation. And we want a reason to be proud to be a part of a nation. Nothing does this better than sports. Sport has the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to speak to youth like not much else can. The great Nelson Mandela said that in the year 2000 at the inaugural L'Oreal Sports Awards. And in every sense of the word, it still means true today. Do you guys go to local sporting events? Anyone been to a local uh, football event? Yeah. Uh, everyone's chanting, excitement's building. We wear the same outfits, right? And we, we celebrate the win like, as if we had been the one that had the blood, sweat, and tears. And we, if, we, if there are team loses, it's, uh, we uh, go home with our heads hanging low. Right? Every four years, at the Olympic Games and the FIFA World Cup, there's a saying, the excitement that it, that it brings. It, our media and news are consumed by the excitement. We can use sports to, as nation development, the best way to use it is to promote the national team in which we are good at, in which Malaysians are good at, right? At the 2008 Summer Olympic Games in Beijing, we, it attracted over a viewers of 4.4 billion people, an estimated cost almost 44 billion USD. One country invested over a million USD into one single athlete in order to prepare them to be competitive. One of those, I was one of those million dollar athletes. But that's typical, it, that's the cost. That's what it takes and the nations invest in this. So what kind of countries win Metals. Ones with a lot of population, perhaps, or ones with a lot of money. In 2012 Olympics at the London Games, the U.S. won 103 medals. 46 of them were gold. And China came in second place with 88 medals, 38 of which were gold. But if population is so important, then why has India, with a population of 1.33 billion, only ever won 27 or 28 medals? When China, which has a, only 50 million more people, produced over 600 medals. And, and if money is so important, why has Kenya, produce more medals, 33 more medals than Saudi Arabia, despite having a GDP per capita of 17 times lower? The answer has to be policy. We as a nation can formulate a plan for sporting success. We can bring home glory by either promoting the sports that we are already good at, badminton, track cycling, diving, which has won all of our Olympic medals so far, or we can form a plan to support sports community added to the games. That brings me to esports, the fun part, right? Because I know all of you like playing esports. Did you know that later this year at the Southeast Asian Games, 
esports will be an official event, walking among the other mainstream athletes. And last year at the Asian Games in Jakarta, East, the Olympic Council of Asia introduced esports as a demonstration event. It went so well that they officially announced that at next Asian Games in 2022, esports will be an official event with medals awarded. That's amazing. So, esports, Sea Games, Asian Games. But how many of you really think esports is a sport? There's like three hands. How many of you think that esports isn't a sport? Let's look at the definition in the Oxford Dictionary. E uh, sport, an activity involving physical exertion and skill in which an individual or team competes against another or others for entertainment. Esport, entertainment, check, correct? Check. Competing against other or others for entertainment? Check, check, check. And e taking skill, check, definitely takes skill. Okay, an activity involving physical exertion. Probably uh, that's, that's debatable, right? Oh, sorry. Can I go back one? Okay. Okay, that brings me to cycling. I run an academy for e-cycling. And it basically, we, it takes a monotonous training of indoor cycling a boring, traditionally boring activity where you just stare at the wall, white wall, and you just churn away for an hour or two hours or three hours, and takes it into something interactive, virtual, live. You can compete against your friends or even professionals across the world, no matter what country they're in. And you can ride together. If you want to ride the Alps tomorrow, you can out ride the Alps tomorrow. And it's very realistic. If you go over bumps, the, the smart trainer shakes. I mean, it feels kind of good, you know? And it, it's, it's amazing, right? So last week, I had my students train, push themselves so hard because they're interacting and they're talking smack at each other, which you can do on, on, on this platform. And they're pushing so hard that at the end of the 60-minute 60 uh, minute workout, I had them on the floor like this. And they were in fetal position because they had pushed their bodies so hard. So going back to the activity involving physical exertion, e-sport, check. Now, th there's a video I want you to, to watch uh, that shows you that in America, because America is always like early adopters, right? In America, varsity sports, I don't know if you, many of you know varsity sports. It's like your high school sports and, you know, all the jocks trout for varsity. If you make the varsity team, it's, it's very, like, cool. You're like the cool kid, right? So now a few schools in U.S. are introducing eSports as official varsity sports. I want to, and this is a CNN video, so it's, you, can, you can trust it. It's, uh, it's not fake news. eSports. It's already in the SEA Games. It's going to be in the Asian Games. And the IOC can no longer ignore it. Our own youth and sport minister, YB Said Sadiq, has pledged 10 million ringgit with the aim of making Malaysia Asia's eSports hub. So you can see the trajectory is unbelievable. SEA Games. Asian Games, talking about implementing it in the Olympics, already in high school varsity sports in U.S. Malaysia, we can formulate a plan for success. We can support this newly adopted event. We can encourage our youth to practice and compete, because you never know. Our first Olympic gold medalist could very well come from this sport. Thank you.